Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with a card for Newton's Nook Designs. I am up on the blog today and for today's card I thought that I would try to mix it up a little bit and just use dies. Very often I use the stamps from Newton's Nook Designs as they make so many adorable stamps but recently they've been coming out with a lot of dies and I wanted to um, take advantage and show you some of the, how you can use the dies together. So I'm starting with the uh, Feathers and Arrows die set. I, that's not the official name, but I will leave you a link in the video description to all of the different uh, dies that I use as well as to the Noon Snook Designs blog. And to do some die cutting today, I wanted to make rainbow paper to die cut. And I had this rainbow washi tape from Little Bee and I've had it for a while because I love rainbows, as many of you know, but I wasn't quite sure how I would use it. And I had been experimenting with um, different ways to put washi tape on cards, and I realized I could line up the tape and create a piece of rainbow paper with the stripes. And so I'm going to lay the rainbow washi tape across this piece of white cardstock and I will line up all of the colors so it looks like one continuous line even though it's strips of tape. And while if you look very closely you can see where one piece of tape ends and the next begins, it creates a pretty seamless look. Now if you didn't happen to have this particular rainbow washi, as you probably many people don't, you could color your paper in a rainbow in a number of ways or simply use rainbow paper or try any of your other washi tapes line them up in a similar way um, and do some die cutting with them because I'm basically just going to treat this like paper when I'm finished. So one way to create stripes without the washi tape would be to mask and add layers of distress ink or some kind of other dye ink or color stripes with markers like Copic markers and you know, use a ruler and just draw some stripes across it. But regardless of how you do it, you can then die cut your images out of that piece of um, cardstock and have the look of rainbow across all of the die cuts. And so I chose to die cut that large feather five or six times, and I chose to die cut the smile sentiment, which is from a different Newton's Nook stamp set. Um, well, set of coordinating dies, actually. So even though it's for a stamp set, you don't cut out a stamp that says smile, it just cuts out the word smile. And again, I'll leave you a link to that in the video description. Once I had my die cut ready, I wanted to add a little bit of interest. There's this other die that is part of the garden starter die set, and you are able to cut out the center of a card and it leaves a stitching detail around that and basically creates a really nice frame with a little bit of added detail. So I'm going to layer this white frame over a piece of black cardstock and then arrange my die cuts over it for some interest. When I use rainbow stamping you'll see that I often tend, sorry when I use rainbow coloring, I often tend to pair it with black and white as that really makes the rainbow elements pop in my experience. So that's why I chose the rest for my color scheme. In retrospect, I might have wanted to make my smile a full rainbow as well, um, since you can't see every color of the rainbow on the smile, and having a large chunk of it in the yellow did make it a little bit more difficult to read. So you do want to think about how you place your dies, especially word dies, as they need to come out to be readable, of course. Once I had my elements die cut and I thought about the arrangement. I adhered the layers down and then I'm going to adhere the die cuts. You can use something like stick it adhesive which will create an adhesive back to your dies or um, like two-way tape on the back of your dies before you die cut so that way you don't have to mess around with all of the little die cuts and gluing them on. However, I find that sometimes it's a little bit harder to die cut through those materials, so in this instance I chose to just glue them on as most of these elements um, can be glued on pretty easily. When I glue on something that's quite small and fine detail, like the smile sentiment, I really find that that quill tip on top of my multimedia mat comes in handy. 
the little bottles of multimedia mat don't come with that tip, but I think it's a, um, a valuable purchase for sure. So I just use that thin tip to squirt a very small amount of glue on the back of my die cut. And this also works out well because when you use the multimedia mat, if there is a little bit of extra glue that sort of squishes out when you press the die down, it dries matte. Um, glossy accents work really well to adhere die cuts down as well, but again, I think that, you know, when if, if a little bit comes out the sides, as it would do on those smaller bits, um, then you're going to be able to see that there. Something else that I had considered was to pop up the pieces of, or sorry, the feathers on some foam tape for a little bit of extra dimension, but I wanted them to match the smile. If you wanted to add some dimension to something so thin like the smile die cut, my suggestion would be to die cut the smile out of some craft foam and adhere those layers on. So once that's all adhered, that is it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. For information about the products and Newton's Nook designs, be sure to check out my video description below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.